The second circuit we're going to build in lab for lab three is a digital thermometer. This is actually based on an article that was in Popular Electronics some years ago, and then this is also one of the supplemental problems in ECE 302. You may recall from class that the temperature coefficient, silicon diode, is approximately minus two millivolts per degree C. This means that for every one degree C of increase in temperature, the, the voltage across the diode actually drops by two millivolts. If you convert that to Fahrenheit, it's about minus 1.1 millivolts per degree Fahrenheit. Now it turns out that this number is a ballpark number, and it really varies slightly from diode to diode. So we're going to calibrate our circuit for the particular diode we're going to stick into our circuit, but it's very repeatable. And so most digital thermometers, they use a silicon diode as a sensor, very inexpensive. Suppose that this diode had a drop of 0.6 volts at 27 degrees C, which would correspond to 80.33 degrees Fahrenheit. We could write an equation for the change in voltage based on this temperature coefficient. When T is equal to 80.33, we have 0.6 volts. And then as temperature increases, say 1 degree Fahrenheit, so we have 81.33, this becomes 1, and you multiply that by the temperature coefficient, and you would wind up getting 1.11 millivolt decrease and subtracting that from, from 0.6. So this is an equation that would describe the voltage across the diode versus temperature. Now I need to design a circuit so I could display the temperature. Now what we've got in lab is a digital voltmeter. In fact, you could just buy a cheap digital voltmeter. And perhaps we could just do a straight conversion, maybe at room temperature, we could display 803.3 millivolts. If you just cover up the volt scale, or actually the millivolt scale, and, and label it Fahrenheit, then you really have a digital thermometer. And that's what most devices that are displayed sometimes do. They're just converting, in this case, temperature to a voltage. Another, another reference temperature in lab we could use is our body temperature. We're going to use our fingertips as a way to get a second data point. Suppose that that's 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I would like this then to be displayed as 986.0 millivolts. And then I could just say, just cover up the millivolt and then paint a decimal point here and I could then correspond to the, the temperature that I'm measuring with the thermometer. For this change in temperature, I'm going to get a change in voltage of the diode, again going from 98.6 to 80.33, of around 20.279 millivolts. Now I need that to correspond to a change in voltage on the multimeter of 182.7 millivolts. I need to amplify this change in voltage with temperature. So let's just take the ratio of these two. And that would give me a gain of around 9. So I need to amplify this change in voltage by a scale factor so I can get these results. Well, we could just use a non-inverting op-amp with a gain of 9. Take plus and minus 15 volt power supply and then use one of the power supply voltages to set up a biasing current. And let's just set up roughly around 1 milliamp of current. So I've got a voltage here, maybe around 0.6 volts. If we had a gain of 9, that would correspond to a voltage here of around 5.4 volts at uh, 27 degrees C, or 80.33 Fahrenheit. Now, if the temperature did go up to 98.6, then we would be subtracting this 20.279 millivolts, and that would be 5.2175 volts. So, of course, what's happening here, as temperature goes up, the voltage is going down. Now, our multimeter can take the difference of two voltages. Let's subtract two voltages and try to get the correct display on the multimeter. So I want to display 803.3 millivolts if I was at 80.33 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, that means that I have to create a voltage that would be 6.203 volts, in other words, 5.4 volts here, plus this, so that when I subtracted that voltage from this, I would get this reading. I need to create a DC voltage of 6.203 volts, and then I'm going to hook up terminal of the multimeter to that, the plus terminal, and the minus terminal over here. So when I subtract them, I get 803.3 millivolts. What do I need at, at an elevated temperature? Or really any other temperature. Well, if I needed 986 millivolts, again, corresponding to 98.6, again, I would add to this voltage here 
986 millivolts, so I get 6.203. And again, when I take this voltage and subtract the output of the op amp, which has a diode connected to it, I get the correct reading on the multimeter. In both cases, it's the same value of voltage that I need to have. And again, this is because it's a linear circuit. Really what we're doing is taking this temperature coefficient, which is negative, changing its sign to the subtraction process, and then changing the magnitude of the slope by using the amplifier. We create a DC voltage of 6.203, again, maybe from that positive power supply. Let's take a look at our final design. If I want around 1 milliamp of current to flow in this diode, and I got a 15 volt power supply, then 15 minus the diode drop divided by the current would be the resistance that I need, because no current going into the op amp. Roughly that would be around 15 volts minus 0.6 divided by this resistance, give me 1 milliamp, just somewhere around 15k. I need a gain of 9 for this op amp, so we could pick the feedback resistor to be anything, and then we could solve for the resistor we need to put here. In fact, we can put a pot so we can adjust it. I suppose I use a 47k resistor here. And I need a voltage divider to give me the 6.203 volts with a, from a 15 volt supply. So I suppose I use a 4.7k resistor here. I could use the same as the 47, but let's just use a variety of values. Now let's solve for the resistor here. I know that the gain from here to here needs to be 9. So I could solve for the value of the potentiometer. It turns out to be about 5.875k. So if I could use a 10k pot, that would give me you know, somewhere around the center of the other pot. But I'm going to have to adjust this depending on the actual temperature coefficient of the diode. So it'll give me some room to move up and down. And then the voltage divider here, this resistance over 4.7k plus that resistance times 15 needs to be 6.203. So again, I could solve for the value of this potentiometer. It turns out to be about 3.314k. So again, I could probably use a 10k pot to get the value that I need because I can't get this exactly out of the parts cabinet. So I'll have to adjust this a little bit depending on the actual temperature coefficient of the diode so I can get two points because I've got a straight line relationship. We're going to want to use in lab a pot that slowly changes with rotation and the reason is that we're going to have to calibrate our result. Let's use a multi-turn pot. This is the same as any potentiometer but it takes many many turns of this screw to go from uh, one extreme end to the other. So in lab number three, we've covered the concepts of VI characteristics of various diodes. We've looked at designing a curve tracer using an inverting amplifier. Talked about the Shockley equation for characterizing a diode, the temperature dependence of the diode, and the way to form an equation. And lastly, you could use a digital multimeter to turn it into a thermometer. As far as laboratory techniques goes, we're going to take a look at using the math functions to plot the voltage versus voltage. And then we're going to use the marker function to read points off of a curve. And this is lab number three, diode curve tracer and digital thermometer.